Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips here at Simcoe Diving up in Barrie, Ontario. Great dive store. You're a scuba diver, so you are very familiar with O-rings. You may not even know that, but scuba diving is one of the, probably, and just thinking about it, is probably the sport that uses O-rings more than any other sport because we're, we use high pressure air, gas, different different gases, and we're underwater. O-rings have become very, very important. I won't bore you with the history of O-rings, but at one time when I started diving in 1958, uh, 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 there were no O-rings. If we wanted to seal something, we would put some plastic, we had plastic, <laughs> plastic or some rubber in there, flat washer, and we would jam it really tightly. Even on your tanks, you know how your instructor told you to put the put the regulator on the tank valve, put the knobs and do it do it in just snugly, but not too tightly. <laughs> then when I started, you put that in there, and the knob screw was about this wide, a big T. Oh, you did it really, really tightly. Turn the air on, it still sometimes leaked. But uh, O-rings have made it much simpler. O-rings are just an incredible uh, device, and they actually are a device. They're a technical device just as much as snap rings or any other things that we use. So I thought I'd take one minute here and answer some of your questions because I've had a couple of questions. And also for you guys that are technically inclined, you guys that uh, uh, like to do your own servers, your own uh, maintenance on your equipment, there's something in here for you too. Okay, here we go, O-rings. Generally speaking, O-rings in a scuba system are there to prevent leaks, leaks of water or leaks of air. Generally speaking, what that means is there's something over here that has air or water in it, and there's something over here that doesn't want that air or water to get to it. And those two th things fasten together. So you need something to keep the high-pressure air or the high-pressure water from getting through. That's what an O-ring does, okay? How does that actually work? What does an O-ring do? It sounds like it's just a simple seal. It's not really that simple. Let me show you here. Here's a couple of simple diagrams. So here is a simple diagram right here. Kevin, can you, can you zoom in here? This very first diagram. This is a simple illustration of an O-ring in position. And specifically, this O-ring sits in a groove. You can see this gray area is metal. Okay, and the O-ring sits in a groove that's machined in that metal. And then there's something, no matter what it is, there's something across the top of it. So this could be, this could be a tank valve. You see, the tank valve has a groove in it, like this, made of metal, has a groove, and the O-ring is in that groove. And then when you put your regulator onto the tank valve, the regulator sits down like this. This is the regulator face, and it sits down on top of the O-ring. Now, we haven't turned the air on yet. As it says, there's zero pressure. So, what's happening? Well, if you take a look, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a gap in there. The O-ring is touching the regulator, and it's touching the valve. You see, the O-ring is very slightly flattened. Top, where it touches the regulator, and bottom, where it touches the valve. But it's not sealed yet. There's no pressure. There's no seal. It just shows you how the O-ring is sized, how it fits in there, the way it's supposed to be before you put pressure on. Okay, so now what happens? When you turn the pressure on. Well, I'll take a look over here. Now, in this particular diagram, they've indicated that there's a hundred bar, which, by the way, is 1450 psi, yeah, half of 3000, yeah. And so, anyway, so they turn the pressure on at about 1500 psi. Now, the air pressure is coming out of the tank, so it's coming this way. Watch the red arrow comes in, and there's a little gap in there, so some of that air goes through. You can't get rid of that gap. It's metal on metal. Very difficult to get rid of that gap entirely. Get pressure, it'll go through there. So the air goes through that tiny metal gap in there between the rig and the valve, and it gets into this chamber right here. See that little chamber right there, Kev? Can you see it? That little white area? We'll call that a chamber. It gets into that chamber, and it starts to push the O-ring, because the real O-ring's made of rubber. The O-ring is flexible, so it pushes the O-ring, and it pushes the O-ring against the low pressure side. So this is high pressure right in there, this is low pressure, and the rubber O-ring is pushed against that low pressure side, pushed really hard, and it's pushed so much that it actually changes shape, and it's forced into that gap right there and seals it. That's what happens. Now, <clears throat> proof that that's what happens lies in the fact that if you take the O-ring out of a tank valve, and look at it. Look at it this way, so the O-ring is like this. Look at it, you will notice along one corner, not right down the middle, not on the side, but one corner at an angle, you'll see a little bit of what's 
called feathering. Feathering. I may be able to show you some feathering in just a minute. That's because this sharp edge right there was forced into that gap time after time after time. Every time you put your regulator on, it's forced in there. Every time you turn the air on, eventually that little corner of the O-ring gets a little bit of a feather on there. The O-ring is trying to go out that gap. And a little wee bit of rubber goes out each time. I almost can't see it until it's been done many times. But there's the proof that that's how an O-ring works. When the assembly is put together, the O-ring lightly touches both of the edges that need to be sealed. When you apply pressure, the O-ring is jammed into the remaining crack and seals it up tightly. Now, here are some interesting problems that can occur. And I've seen this happen many times. If you have a very, very old valve, it's a good example, and maybe an equally old regulator, it's been used many, many, many thousands of times. Happens quite often, often at, at dive resorts down south where they don't maintain the gear really, really well. What'll happen is that those surfaces get slightly rounded. They're metal surfaces. They get banged around a bit and worn a little bit. They get, they get a little bit rounded. <clears throat> so now what happens, the O-ring is in here, same as this diagram, go down to here now. So now what happens is <clears throat> the pressure coming in is pushing the O-ring. And you see right up in here, Kevin, you see what's happening? I just talked about the feathering. Well, this one isn't feathering. It's actually traveling. That corner of that rubber O-ring is actually being pushed into the gap. Now that's for two reasons. One reason is, as I've said, it's the edges are getting rounded from where? They're not close enough anymore. So it leaves a little bigger gap. And so the O-ring is trying to get through that as it seals. It's trying to get through there, this way. <laughs> or the other reason could be the pressure is too high. If you had to, for whatever reason, the pressure is too high, then sometimes it'll also try to push the O-ring through that gap. That's what it's trying to do, push it through the gap. Uh, if, if the pressure is too high or the parts are worn, it'll start pushing it through the gap. Yeah. That, by the way, is called extrusion. There's actually a name for that right here. Too high pressure or worn parts cause extrusion. You see it there? What do they do to stop extrusion? Well, there's a couple of things they can do. First of all, make sure the parts are machined smoothly, straight, clean, clear, solid. Also, make sure that they have the right O-ring in there. And what do you mean by the right O-ring? Well, the right size, that's obvious. But also, O-rings come in many different strengths. Hardness, it's called durometer. So you can have an O-ring which is 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, depending on, on how much pressure and on its application. Now, that's chosen. That's chosen by the manufacturer. They choose the right O-ring for what the machine, the regulator in this case, is supposed to do. Um, but another way that they can uh, assist the O-ring is to put in what's called a backup ring. You don't see backup rings too often, but in your regulator, I can almost guarantee you, whether it's a new one or an old one, I can almost guarantee that there are some backup rings inside your regulator. This is particularly common where the parts have to move. Let's assume in this particular case, as an example, this nice old ring is nicely sealed in there. But now suppose you have to move this part. Suppose this part has to slide back and forth. It has to keep sealed, but it has to slide back and forth. That's called a dynamic O-ring. This particular example, where you put the regulator on the tank, tighten it, it doesn't move. That's a static O-ring. But if that part has to move back and forth, it's dynamic. Now that makes it even harder for the O-ring, because every time it moves that way, it tends to drag the rubber that way. Every time it moves this way, it tends to drag the rubber this way, and the rubber is already trying to get out that crack, and pretty soon that rubber O-ring is toast. So sometimes what they'll do is they'll put, in up a, they'll put in a backup ring. The backup ring is usually made of a fairly hard silicone or plastic material. It doesn't stretch. It doesn't extrude. And the backup ring goes in right there. You can see it there, Kevin? Yellow? See in there? That stops the O-ring from extruding into that small crack. It still seals. You still see the shape of the O-ring. You see it's still being pushed. It still seals. But since the backup ring is covering the crack, the O-ring is not extruded into it. Some places, sometimes they have two backup rings, and because particularly if the O-ring moves back and forth. So the O-ring might go this way, and then it might go the other way, but that's another issue entirely. So there you go. That's the important thing. This is how an O-ring is supposed to fit, and this is how it seals, and that's some of the problems. Okay, I want to show you something else. This feathering that I have mentioned, which is a result of the O-ring being forced in that little crack, 
uh, and destroys the O-ring. Here's an example. I have in my left hand, this hand, Kevin, can you get it close here? In this hand, a brand spanking new, shiny new O-ring. And I'll turn them in a minute, Kevin. And then in this hand, I have an O-ring that I just took out of a valve that's been used many, many times, valve face. And you'll be able to see on the top left corner, top left corner of this O-ring, the feathering I'm talking about. So here we go, Kevin. I'll keep them tight together. You tell me when to turn. You can see the feathering already on the right-hand one. But you see the interesting thing? Yep. Can you see that that feathering is in the top left corner? Yep. Yes? That top left corner corresponds, I don't know if you can move now, Kev, corresponds to that right there. You see it? Yep. That rubber is being forced in there. Now a small, let me tell you this, a small dirty trick I shouldn't tell you about If you are diving and there's air bubbles, little air bubbles coming out of the seal between the regulator and the valve, right there with the regulator on the valve, little air bubbles coming out, that's what's causing it. So what do you want to, what do you do? You don't have a spare O-ring? Take this one out very carefully. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Take this one out. Turn it over. Because the top left corner on this side is clean. It'll make a good seal for a while. You need to replace it, but there's a trick for you. So now you know how an O-ring works, and you know how to spot a bad O-ring, the feathering, and a couple of things like that. Before I leave this O-ring thing, I want to take one more minute. And you know what? Kevin just reminded me that we've done, I don't know, four or five hundred of these tech tips. I can't be a hundred percent sure that I haven't touched on some of these points previously. Maybe you guys can <clears throat> take a look back, because I know we've done O-rings before. But uh, uh, I have another little chart here that I found on Google again that is excellent uh, because, uh, because it depicts almost exactly some of the issues that you run into when you're installing or removing O-rings. And the first thing I want to mention is that it's very, very common for dive store service people as well who maybe either haven't been paying attention or uh, are, are, not, uh, are not on the ball to use uh, stainless steel commonly dental picks. They will sometimes get <clears throat> at a flea market or something dental picks or else they will uh, maybe from their dentist pick up dental picks. And dental picks uh, seem to be almost the absolutely perfect answer for removing and installing O-rings. But they're not. And the reason is very simple. Dental picks are very, very hard. They're usually made of uh, stainless steel. Very, very hard material. And if they're not, they're made of, a, a, of steel and they have a plating on them. They're usually very, very hard. And almost all scuba equipment is made of brass with a very, very, very thin plating on it, usually chrome. But the chrome scratches very easily, and the brass, which is the soft metal, scratches very, very easily. And you can begin to appreciate, since you now understand how old rings work, if there are any scratches on these surfaces, that's going to lead to premature O-ring failure. In fact, it may lead to immediate failure if it's scratched and you put an O-ring in and it's under high pressure, it may not seal and then you have a real problem. Okay, so what do you do? Well, what you do is you get proper O-ring tools right on there, O-ring tools. And there's, there's, there's a couple of different uh, kits available, flat tips, spread tips. This is, this is the most common one. This is a very, very common tool here. They have one end that is hooked, and the other end is slightly bent. And these are made of brass. That was, that's what makes them proper O-ring tools. You see? They're made of brass. So they won't scratch chrome. You get no scratches in the grooves or in the other parts. So your O-rings would be uh, good. And this little chart here shows some of the uses. If you're trying to get an O-ring out, you can reach in with this point. Put the point right into the rubber O-ring. It's going to be garbage anyway, so put it right into the O-ring, flip it out. That way the, 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 um, the uh, pick is not scratching the surface, you see? Or, depending on where the O-ring is, you might reach in like this. Get it up in there, then carefully flip the O-ring out. There's a variety of ways of doing that. Now, this same pick is used to install O-rings. Some of the O-rings are like this. This is depicting, I don't know if you can see this, Kevin. This is depicting a, a, a tunnel, a tube, a hole through part of a regulator or a valve. And there's an O-ring in that tube. 
This is a quite a common arrangement. There's an O-ring that sits in here and, a, and something moves up and down in there, you see? So that getting that O-ring in there is, is tough sometimes, particularly if the O-rings are very, very small, which they are, sometimes a quarter of an inch or smaller. And you have to get the O-ring down into the tube. Then you got to reach down and back one end up into the groove and then lift the other end up into this groove and tuck it all into place. And it's, it's not hard to do, uh, but it takes a little bit of practice. But using a brass pick like this makes it a lot simpler. So there's some more tips on what you should do to keep your rings in good shape. So I hope there's something in there. The feathering of the O-rings and how an O-ring actually seals is really important to know. It's not just a plastic or rubber seal is jammed in there. No, no, no. There's a special process by which an O-ring seals. And now you understand. I hope understand that a bit better. I hope anyway. Okay, guys. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce Scuba from Simcoe Diving. We'll be back.